Hey guys, and so welcome to this new tutorial on Grasshopper. And in this tutorial, we're going to just start um, doing a little bit more of a complex network to to develop some design proposal, right? Um, and we're going to start talking a little bit about angle and um, vectors, right? So what I'm going to do here is just draw some lines, and this is a similar example that I have also in Rhino script in Python. That it's um, it's a kind of shape that we work with uh, before for a project in the AA. So I like showing different versions of how it could be done in Grasshopper and RhinoScript. And because I, in a way it's a really good piece to show some of the power of vectors, right? So let's start with these two curves, right? So let's bring them into Grasshopper. Set one curve, set another curve, and that's fine. Um, what we're going to do now is just divide them. And we're going to just use a number slider for both of them. So, number type and edit expression to be something like. Right, so we have this. So that's perfect. Um, what we want to do now is just let's see a little bit quickly if we just would do a line. This doesn't look too good, right? So we have a connection between these elements, but we could do something better than that. Um, we could use some of these tangencies, um, the tangencies of the point in the curve, depending whatever curvature that point has, to start using to create a curve as opposed to just do a straight line, right? So let's get rid of this line and let's start using that tangency. Um, so let's see what we're uh, getting out of this division. Uh, we're getting the points themselves we are getting the tangent vector, so that's exactly what I want, and this is the parameter values at the points, right? So if we do points out of the tangents, we can start visualizing that these tangents are vectors. Why can we know they're vectors? Because they're basically arrows that are kind of pointing from zero in a certain direction, right? There's also kind of a vector visualizer, which is, I believe, vector display here, right? So the vector display allows us, it shows us the anchor points uh, and the vector preview. So the vector is this one, and the anchor point, we are going to say that it's, because it is, um, basically zero. So this is what I was mentioning just before. These vectors are kind of starting from zero. In this case I'm just showing them, uh, visualizing these vectors. But the truth of the matter is that the they are basically arrows represented as on top of each one of these points, right? So that's basically what is happening. It's showing you the tangency, our arrows, from this point in the direction of the geometry. So if you change this curve, you will basically change the direction of that tangency, right? But it's important to understand that vectors are, as, a, as in, in the way they're described, they are anchored in zero, right? So that's for the explanation of it. But now we can we can start using them. So, what do we want to do? So I just could get rid of this stuff. Um, I want to be able to um, first of all pick that vector that it's an arrow, right? Scale it down, um, or scale it to let's scale it, right? So let's use math and scale. Be sure to use scale, not so multiplication, and not addition, right? 
and we can multiply by something. So let's put a slider here. So the vector gets multiplied by something. And then, so we have a control of how much, uh, how big that vector is. And then we can just basically create a point that is the addition. So this is a different one, the addition of the point and the vector. Well, we don't need the point because it's created automatically, right? So you can see now that when we add these two, we're getting a point that it's the point plus the vectorial, the vector of addition. So we have this other point, right? So that's quite simple. And um, but we have an extra point here, and we could just basically make this slider slightly bigger, something like ten, and we can make this. Right, so what I want to do is just do this for both sides, right? So I'm just going to copy this, and I'm going to just pass the tangents here and add. So I have both sides. I have the original points and the tangent points, the other lines, original points, and the tangent points, right? And both of them have a slider. If we would like to see this kind of line, first of all, we could connect the points and the new points with the tangent, right? So you start seeing a little bit what we're getting out here. This kind of projections of the tangencies. If any of these points is annoying you, you can just turn off the preview, right? And in this case, what we're going to do is just connect this one and that one and we have that thing as well. So we're doing these lines on the tangency. And now what we're going to do is just do a curve that connects this point, its tangent point, the other tangent, and back to this one. And here we're going to start just briefly introducing. So this tutorial is good because it will introduce two topics that we will have to just definitely break out into separate tutorials. But it will talk about a little bit about um, flattening and graph, right? And um, also, as we have introduced already, a bit of uh, vectors. So, what we want to do now is merge, right, between these points. the tangent vector, the other tangent, and the other point. So this is putting together four elements, right? And the order is this one, one, two, three, four. We could just reduce the number of elements just for the sake of explanation, right? We're going to try to do a curve that does this. Right, so one, two, three, four, that's the order. Right, so we can just put these lines out of the way because they're not helping us visualize this thing properly. Right. Um, but this merging, let's see a little bit what's going on here. This merging really is giving us all the points together, right? It's giving us a list of the full amount of points, right? So what we need to do here is something called, let's leave that on so we can just visualize that change. If we would try to do a curve like this one, um, we can use yeah, this one is fine. If we would try to do a U curve, you see that what we're getting is just doesn't make sense, right? We're, we're connecting all the points together. We just want to be able to maintain that logic of like four points, they are their own kind of set, right? They are their own kind of group. And the next four points are their own group as well. So let's try something here by right clicking and saying graft. 
I'm going to do that for each one of them. And there we go. And you can see that what this did is just, well, as I said, it's introducing the idea of this, uh, the logics of the tree. But it's doing a, a new branch of a tree, independent for each one of the inputs. So the, the four inputs come in, and they create their own little set. The next four inputs come in, and they create their own little set. And then the curve is taking in consideration these sets to create a series of curves. So we're going to just, in the next tutorial, we're going to start talking about these sets and trees and all that kind of stuff, right? But for now, we just need to make sure that we actually do that. Because if not, the system won't work. And we still have control over the tangencies here. You can see each one of the sides. And then obviously, if we want to increase the number of divisions, that also works, right? So this is like, if you see the Python tutorial, you you're, you definitely are dealing with the information in a different way. And in this case, a little bit of the trick is, is really dealing with this grafting, right? If you would do these sliders to allow for a negative value, you can see that you can make that variation in the other direction, right? I definitely think it looks better in this direction. But that's just a matter of taste. And um, uh, if you really want to just keep developing this example, you could actually offset this curve, for instance, or we just make a copy of it, really. So how do we do a copy of this curve? Right, just gonna leave this here as an explanation. Whatever, just gonna leave it there. And let's call move. If you think about it, move is definitely copying in Grasshopper because Grasshopper is just building information on top of other information. So copy, there's no way of really moving information, but basically making a copy of information. So move is the copy. So these curves are the object to uh, the geometry to copy or to move in this case and what is how do we want to move them we can use we can use one of these vectors right we can use this vector here um, each one of those two should be fine so we can actually uh, multiply this vector by some other value And in this case, maybe we want to flatten this, right? Um, the flatten, it's the opposite of the... What I did here is just a right-click flatten, because, again, I have to show this. I'm getting the curves, each one as a separate group, like here, as, as we were dealing with this grafting before, right? So if I press flatten you can do it also there's a node called flatten if you want to make it explicit right so when you flatten something you get everything in one group right so it's a way of just removing all this kind of information of the tree and dealing only with the information like making everything go back to one group right so it flattens the if you don't want to do it like that. This version of Grasshopper allows you to flatten the stuff directly in the input, but you can do it through this node as well. So now we have the curve, or basically this original curve, and the moved curve. And we can try to love them together. So we're going to just use this one and that one and grafting sorry here we'll have to just be a little bit more cl uh, clear about what is the information that is coming in uh, let's see so this information it's a series of curves and this information 
right so in this case you see that we have a different path so let's flatten this as well right so let's try now these guys and these guys sorry So, okay, we have a problem here. Let's use the merge to be more clear about what we're doing, right? So we have this curve here and these two. But we want to just do groups of two. So we have to graft both, right? So there we go. And now we can actually loft and each group of two should get their own set, right? Um, yeah, so if you're getting confused about this graft and this um, flatten, we will do a tutorial specifically based on that and explaining really what is going on. But in a way, this example is pushing some of the content that we're creating to just go through um, some of those problems, right? Grafting and flattening really are something to just you need to learn in a way because it, it, it allows you to really kind of deal with the information in the way you want right and here you can see that we have created uh, this sequence of curves and this series of surfaces and we can still edit this to just have maybe 30 So design a little bit with it, so we could just make it slightly bigger, the vectors, right? So a little bit more accentuated. And if we pick these curves out, we can just try to move these points a little bit more like that. So you can see the result. Again, this is a little bit going back to the project of the probiotics that we we developed in DRL. Um, I believe that there's also some material that it looks similar like this that was from MTech in AA. But just check that material out. Uh, it's is the basics of the logic that we use for like some of the flexing wood material, and so yeah, it it has a lot of to do with the tangency of the curves and. And basically it keeps open up opening up more or less depending on on the curvature of the curves that you're using with so it's so quite an interesting model you can explore it more if you want and this is the network I'll post it online as well uh, and as I said we will cover flatten and uh, graft and more vectors definitely uh, in the upcoming tutorials so that's it for now see you guys